Hello! Today we're going to be discussing two body force problems. So far we've only looked at the forces that act on a single body. During these problems, however, we're going to look at the forces when two bodies are interacting with one another. As you can tell, we're joined again today by our fire alarm. So let's enjoy the dulcet tones there screeching at us in the background as we investigate two body force problems. Let's quickly review tension because tension is what keeps us all together. You know, nice pun there, huh? Uh, when you're dealing with frictionless and massless pulleys, like we will be, when massless ropes, which of course we are, the force of tension is uniform throughout the wire or rope. Okay? When you start dealing with pulleys that have friction and mass and they start to rotate, you're then dealing with the idea of torque. But we're not looking at that yet. So we're just going to look at our tension being uniform throughout the entire rope. Therefore, the force of tension that acts on multiple objects will be the same. It's been very important for us in terms of looking at solving these kind of problems. We have two main examples of multiple body force problems. The first is referred to as an Atwood machine. And the Atwood machine consists of two masses that are being connected over a massless rope, or by a massless rope, over a frictionless and massless pulley. Okay, so in this case we're going to have object one and object two. You can notice that object two is larger, so we're going to say that's the more massive of our two objects. Let's go ahead and say that the mass of object one is one kilogram, and the mass of object two, we'll say, is four kilograms. We see that these two objects are both hang are hanging by a massless rope over a frictionless and massless pulley. So the first thing we want to do, like we always do, is draw the free body diagram. Okay, so looking at mass one, we have the force of tension pulling it upward and we have its own weight pulling down. Okay, we said before that the tension is going to be the same in each of them, however, the force of gravity is not because they have different masses. So I'm going to specify this as FG with a little one subscript, while the FT doesn't have a subscript at all because it's the same. The free body diagram for mass two is going to be eerily similar, in fact that it is exactly the same, except the fact that we do have a different mass. So the force of tension upward is still FT, but the force of gravity downward, we're going to call Fg2. Now we want to look at the summation equation. So I'm going to go ahead and just scan this up here. And our goal in this problem is to determine what the acceleration of our system is. All right, so just keep that in mind. We're trying to figure out what acceleration of the system is. So we set this up, we do our summation equation. We'll see the sum of the forces acting on block one is equal to that force of tension upward minus the force of gravity downward which will equal M1A. Okay, notice we do specify with subscripts. Remember that in our system, because M2 is more massive, M1 is going to accelerate upward, while M2 will accelerate downward. Okay, so we'll have to keep that in mind as we go through the problem. We'll look at the forces on block two, which again is going to be very similar to the forces on block one because it's still force of tension upward, force of gravity downward, this time, though, because I've said that the negative sign here represents the downward direction, and we know that mass 2 is going to be accelerating downward, I need to make this out of my equation negative m2a. All right, so keep that in mind. If you don't do that, you're going to end up with an acceleration at the end of the problem that's more than likely going to be greater than 9.8 meters per second squared. And we know that our speed limit for objects falling on Earth is that 9.8 meters per second squared, or not really the speed limit, but the acceleration limit. So we need to make sure that we don't end up with a value like that. When you work these problems, and if you get an acceleration greater than 9.8 or even right at 9.8, you should probably realize that you made a mistake and go back and double check your work. So I'm going to go ahead and scale, scroll this up here so we can just look at these summation equations. Our goal here is to solve for the acceleration. So we're going to expand this out and see what we're really working with here. So if I look over here, I'm going to have FT, which we don't know, minus M1G equals M1A, and then on my right hand side I'm going to say that FT minus M2G, what is that a 1, that should be a 2, Look. equals negative M2A, you knew that was a 2. Alright, so we have two equations, and let's see how many unknowns we have. We don't know FT, that's okay, oh, I don't want that one, the highlighter. Alright, so we don't know FT, those are two unknowns. And we don't know A. Goodness gracious. So make some more mistakes. This is a G. So 
Sorry about that, guys. Okay. We don't know A. All right. We're going to try to solve for A. So when we set up an equality or do a substitution, we don't want to substitute with an A. If we use A as our substitutor, that's going to be canceled out and adds us one extra step. So we don't need to know FT. Okay, we're not going to be asked that in a problem. So we're going to solve for FT on both sides, and then we can either use it as a substitution, or we can set them equal to each other, however you want to do it, however you're most comfortable solving systems of equations. So let's go ahead and go back to our pen here, and we're going to say that on our left-hand side that FT is equal to M1G plus M1A. And I got that by just adding my M1G to both sides. Okay, I added that to both sides and it left me with that relationship for FT. I'm going to do the same thing over here for mass 2. I'm going to add my M2G to the other side. So I'm going to get M2G minus M2A is what FT equals over there. All right, so I'm just going to do um, equalities to set them equal to each other. However, you can do a substitution, whatever makes you happy. Okay. Now I'm going to set these two equal to each other, and I'm going to say M1G plus M1A equals M2G minus M2A. I'm going to get my G's on the right-hand side and my A's on the left-hand side. So I'm going to subtract M1G from both sides. And I'm going to add M2A to both sides. So when we set our, have our equality now, if I scroll this up a little bit further so you can see it. On our left hand side, I'm going to just rewrite this in one color so we don't have to worry about this anymore. I'm going to have M1A plus M2A equals M2G minus M1G. You can substitute at any time for your masses. You can do it back in the very beginning if you wanted to. That's okay. It doesn't matter to me. It just doesn't make the answer to your problem any different. Okay? So let's go ahead and substitute now just to make sure that we have an idea of what we're doing. M1 we said before was 1 kilogram. So I'm going to say 1 kilogram times A plus M2, which was 4 kilograms times A equals M2, which was 4 kilograms times G minus one kilogram times G. So I'm going to also go ahead and substitute in here. And I'm going to say one kilogram plus four kilograms gives me five kilograms times the acceleration, which equals three kilograms times the 9.8 meters per second squared. Three times 9.8 is 29.4. So I'm going to say five kilograms times A equals 29.4 newtons. And if I divide both sides by five, I'll get the acceleration of my system will be 5.88 meters per second squared. And we know that is in the direction of the larger mass, in this case the 4 kilogram mass. Okay, So there's our first type of problem, an Atwood machine. Again, it's used as a system of equations, solve for FT on both sides, set them equal to each other, or solve for FT on one side and then substitute it. Make sure that you can check your answer by knowing that the acceleration must be less than 9.8 meters per second squared. Okay, So I feel pretty good about that answer, no need to go for us to go back and double check it. We have one more type of problem to look at. And this is what I like to call a modified Atwood machine. This is kind of slid off my page here a little bit, so let me see if I can get all this taken care of. Okay, that's good enough. Sorry about that. When you have a modified outward machine, instead of having two objects in the air being hung together, we have one that rests on a table. Okay, so in this case, we're going to have block one resting on a table while block two is in the air. 
we're again going to draw our free body diagrams. So let's look at block one. Okay, if we look at block one's forces, we see that it has the force of gravity acting down. In this case, it's on a table, so the tent normal force acts upward, and we have the tension pulling it to the right. Okay, block two has its weight pulling it down. That's what's going to pull it down for the entire system, and the force of tension pulling it up. Okay. Notice again, the tension is slowing it down. It will not, not accelerate at 9.8 meters per second squared because tension is present. Next step is to draw our, free, our summation equations. The summation equation for block one, and we're just looking at the horizontal one because that's the direction that it accelerates, is equal to FT, which will equal M1A. We'll do the same thing for block two. Again, remember that block two is accelerating downward. So we have to be consistent with our directions here. And I'm gonna say FT minus FG2 which equals negative M2A. This type of problem is actually a little simpler than the Atwood machine because you don't have that extra term with our left hand side here. Okay? We look, looking at this, we see that FT, not the right one. We see that FT simply just equals M1A. So we can take the M1A and we can plug it in over here for the FT. And we can get M1A. minus M2G equals negative M2A. We can put our, all of our A's on the left hand side, all of our G's on the right hand side. And so I'm going to do that. I'm just going to add my M2A to both sides. And I'm going to add my M2G to both sides. So when we look at our new summation equation, I'll do this one in orange too, we'll have M1A plus M2A equals M2G. And if we use our same masses as we did before, we'll say M1 as a, a one kilogram mass. M2 is four kilograms, so you can do whatever mass you wanted to. Okay, if we say four times 9.8, that's 39.2. And our left hand side will combine these two terms, we'll add those up. So we'll say one kilogram plus four kilograms is five kilograms times A equals 39.2 newtons. Now I need to divide 39.2 by 5. I get a value of 7.84 meters per second squared. Okay, and that value should make sense compared to the last one because the mass one, the one kilogram mass, isn't hanging and holding back our system. So it's going to accelerate at a greater rate. All right, hopefully the Fire alarm wasn't too terrible for you. I know we kind of rushed through this a little bit, but hopefully if you set up good summation equations, you do good free body diagrams, you're clear about your substitutions and your signs, these questions aren't any more difficult than the one body problems. Thanks!